What is going on YouTube and Yacht Squad? This is your boy Yacotees and this is your review for The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. So we start off, it's uh the next night, oh, I'm sorry, the next night, the next morning after the intense blow up and everything else. Uh, the ladies order four uh, Bloody uh, Marys and two mimosas. And, you know, they do say sometimes to kill a hangover, you just got to drink it. You know, like, drink. Yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. But apparently that's what they need, so okay, whatever. Uh, Doris says she didn't sleep last night, given everything that's going on with her. Erica feels that Doris should talk to Lisa's mom because, you know, she had a similar experience. And that was um, Lisa's mom um, in her early years, I think before she was pregnant with Lisa, was attacked by a co-worker. And this same co-worker turned to be a serial killer. So maybe talking to her will help, you know, uh, help things. So Garcelle asked if Cal has talked to uh, Sutton. And she says the other ladies are going to have breakfast together, so not going to be joining them because they're supposed to be going back to uh, Beverly Hills later on that day. Crystal uh, told Garcelle the night before that she just wanted to go home. And they discussed what Crystal's trigger was, and Erica pretty much seems to get it. But at the same exact time, she was very clear the night before. Now, obviously, they had been drinking, but I always say, I'm going to continue. I, I think this is going to be in every review that I do, damn near. But it's the whole people here to respond, but not listen to understand. And it doesn't seem like there was much understanding that was happening the night before. So, Garcelle calls Crystal. Crystal is baffled that they don't know what her trigger was even though she pretty much explained it even though later on uh, it kind of seemed as if she had difficulties explaining it but whatever and the other women are eavesdropping because garcelle had went into like the kitchen part no i'm sorry the dining room part of the air because they were sitting in like the living room she went over to another table so like the dining room but them eavesdropping they you know get the tea even though they knew garcelle was just going to come back and tell them what it was and um, Garcelle wants Crystal to clear the air and say, you know what, just come over for 10 minutes. Erica thanks them for embracing her the last year with her being up and down when it came to her emotions. And she says no one knew. Oh, wait, am I getting ahead of myself? No. Um, Garcelle lets Erica know that the issue was that, you know, you didn't verbalize, you know, your compassion for what the victims were going through. And Erica said, I couldn't do that because everything was legal and any and everything that I said could be used against me, which you said a whole, whole lot last year that I was kind of looking like, why are you even discussing this? Like, you would think she would have already had it in her mind. Like, these are the things that I'm going to say and these are what my lawyers told me to say. I felt like she overshared and possibly could have shot herself in the foot. And, uh... She then says no one knows if the quote-unquote victims weren't paid. And I'm like, oh, okay, Erica. Now, now we, I mean, granted, she was always doing the most. I'm like, okay, now we're doing a little bit much now. Because what I'm not understanding is even though this is an ongoing, you know, litigation or whatever, that if I was her, I would be trying to steer the conversation or steer my storyline in a different direction. You know, occasionally talking about legal stuff but embracing something new. So, obviously, she has nothing new to bring to the table. Um, Crystal arrives. Then we get a scene with um, Sutton and Diana. Um, they're going to have brunch and then leave. Sutton mentions how, you know, she doesn't eat meat, but she loves bacon. And, obviously, that throws off Diana because there's no such thing as a vegetarian that eats, you know, um, bacon but i mean hey it's her dietary lifestyle she can't live without bacon she can't live without bacon leave it alone ain't that serious and then they talk about triggers and diana said like her trigger is people talking about her accent like that is something that will send her she also brings up you know the way that she was brought up where she lived and everything it has caused her uh to be explosive and you know she's worked on that and given that when it she deals with people they don't get second chances. You get that one time, and that is it. Suddenly, it's like, eh, you might want to get these ladies like seven or eight chances. Now, I do get where Diana's come from. Like, you only get one chance. But 
I'm also one of those people where, especially if I'm his media person, if I feel like we're going to be cultivating some type of situationship and you say something crazy or whatever, I will address it in the moment or very close to like, hey, this is being said, da 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 you know, because sometimes you got to establish those boundaries very quickly on because if you don't, again, that's letting that person know, oh, I continue to say or do whatever because you're accepting it now. Now, after that, if you continue on with the foolishness, then yeah, I just don't have no use for you. So whatever. Crystal. Now, so now we get back to the other ladies. Crystal want, <clears throat> wants to have this combo and never talk about it again, which I'm just like, you realize we are on a reality TV show. And if that was the case, y'all should have deaded this at the reunion last year. So we wouldn't even be here. She shares how she felt about them telling her last year, you know, she was wrong. It took her a moment to get there to just say this is what it is. But I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, that woman is still, you know, fresh. So I'm not going to judge her there. Garcelle says last night you said this wasn't a safe space. What does that mean? Now, I don't think that Garcelle is that obtuse that she doesn't realize. It. I think what Garcelle was trying to do is these ladies don't know what you mean, so can you explain so they can understand what you mean? Because I'm pretty sure Garcelle understood it because I'm Garcelle was in that same situation last year where this group wasn't a safe space for her. And, you know, her whole thing is not being heard, and then because she's not being heard, then her next thing is, okay, I just got to shut down. So that is... so. And I get it, like, when you're with a group of people and you're trying to sit here and, you know, verbalize things, but nobody is hearing you, and people are trying to tell you how to feel and all this stuff, and again, I know this feeling all too well. I can understand it. And again, yeah, at a certain point, you do just shut down. It's like, you know what? I'm not going to keep on going around and around on this carousel, and we're not going anywhere. Like, we're stuck in the same dang on radius. And then, I put this down. I don't think I talked about the dogs much last week. I mentioned it. Okay, now look, I, I'm a dog person. I do have a dog. Now, I got my dog when she was two years old, so stuck in some ways, and, you know, we're still working through things. One thing my dog is not finna do is she's not finna sit here and, you know, eat on the table. She's not finna sit here and eat off somebody's uh, plate. She, I don't even let her in the kitchen. The only time she's in the kitchen is when she's transitioning from being where her cage is to going out in the backyard to, you know, do her business. Other than that, no, you're not in the kitchen. Like, these are some strict things because, again, it, it, it's like, it, I, it's like I said, when it comes to people, when you let them get away with certain things in their mind, they believe that, okay, this is okay behavior. So, you've already let the dogs do this the night before, which leads me to believe this is something that the dogs do daily and now the dog literally just walked in to where there's food sitting on the table and it's just you know helping themselves and now kyle decides i'm going to put the dogs up yeah see i i, I look I'm, a, I'm gonna keep it 1000 with y'all the chance if i ever was invited to an event that kyle was hosting especially at her house i wouldn't eat a damn thing the most i'm gonna do is touch them drinks i ain't eat nothing okay hell no so kyle apologizes for making her feel unheard because she's a fixer. I looked at her like, fix what? Fix the drama? Nagar Sil was like, uh, yeah, you're half and half. <laughs> uh, she says you're a fixer and a stirrer. Cal says to Crystal, you know what? Next time, if there's an issue, can you not wait a year? Which is cool, but at the same time, you can't tell somebody uh, when to get over something you can't do wrong by somebody and then dictate the healing process and how they deal with you can't do that you really can't but again this is kyle pretty much doing what chris just said that y'all do but you know whatever garcelle then because now kyle said let's not wait a year kyle says okay well i want to get something off of my chest that happened a year ago which again i don't know why this wasn't addressed at the reunion so she says that no, she felt no matter what Sutton said that she was going to say to her, please tell me you're that girl. Like, it didn't matter what she said. That it, she felt that was going to be what she said, and it felt much like a setup. 
And here's where I'm a little bit iffy with Crystal, because here's the reality. You don't have to answer every question, and there is a way that you can answer a question and just leave it where it's at and don't have to go any further. So either A, her mouth spoke before her brain could process exactly what it was that she was trying to say, or this was intentional because up until this point, Crystal hasn't had a storyline, right? So Crystal says... um, I'm sorry, she asked, do you still feel that way now that you've gotten to know me? That's not answering the question. But uh, Garcelle says she doesn't know. So then Crystal lets Garcelle know, you weren't there, but Kyle was. And I would have stopped it right there where it's just like, look, you weren't there, Kyle was. And obviously, there's a lot that was said. And that that could have been it because they're on a show. They do realize that a lot of stuff is taped and scenes are cut down. But she went on to say there was more that was said that was dark. And this is where things get a little bit tense. And Crystal says that they are not going to discuss what was said that was dark. Where it's just like, I don't have to discuss it. I'm just letting you know there was more that was said. And Gar- and the women feel it because in their mind, it's almost like you're fishing. Like you're throwing the bait out there and you want us to ask, but you're not going to give us that. And my thing is, why do many of y'all care that much? Because y'all really don't, but whatever. Uh, Garcelle's son calls and she finds out that he got a job working for Lisa Vanderpump and let's just say many of the women were not happy to hear that information especially Kyle so whatever so we get Doreen and PK we find out PK has the sugars Doreen is concerned about his lifestyle PK wants the girls in that this is kind of how like a staycation type of girls trip where if things get too overwhelming she can just easily come back home and then they have a conversation about him not watching shows that she likes to watch with him. So pretty much don't watch something that you know I want to watch because I want to watch it with watch it with you. Watch something new. So then we get um uh, I'm skipping through the stuff. So now we get into Dory and Kyle. So Lisa texted Dory and stated that uh Lois uh, had a stroke and I, I'm I forgot to write the name down so I'm pretty sure Lois is her mother but had a stroke. And she had to go check on her. She has, um, she pretty much has to be in hospice. There is, and they've been told there is a do not resuscitate. So I don't know if this is what Lois wanted or not, but there's a do not resuscitate and no feeding to. Uh, Kyle shares that, you know, she understands because her mother was in hospice and her mother said that she did not want to be in hospice. She wanted to be home where she can go in her home, which is not unheard of. And then Kyle gets a message, or I should say an alert, that there is somebody taking pictures over her gate. So it's nice that you're getting it, because my thing is, so you weren't getting these alerts when your uh, house got burglarized the last time, but that ain't none of my business. So we get Sons event. Alexis is the designer. So, you know, made through customs, all that good jazz. Erica was invited, but she isn't coming. Perfectly fine. Keep your energy at home. Dorit is upset that there is press at this event. Why are you upset? Most, look, and, and again, I've never been to something like this, but in watching reality television, most of the time when there is a launch or something significant going on, there's going to be press there to get the buzz and whatnot. Especially when you have this designer that has, you know, couture fashion, you want the press there so people can come to the store. Like, come on, Dorit. And she felt like not only should Sutton have told her there was going to be press there, which, granted, you shouldn't assume, but I would have just assumed that there would be, but also should have considered her ma'am it ain't about you it's really not and again it and but because i even felt the way like why the hell is lisa renner asking if you know it's okay for her to still have harry's birthday party where it's just like and and again if you feel the way baby you ain't gotta come like i'm only going to accommodate you but so much but i got a business to run i, I got i got money to make okay let, let's be clear so kyle discusses um Dorit's issue with the press I feel like that's going to come back and bite her in her butt unless Dorit said you can discuss it I'm just not going to I feel a way Kyle talks to Sutton and asks if she and Crystal are okay because again here we go with uh, Kyle stirring the pot Sutton doesn't want to relive a rehash Sutton whole thing is me, she and I we dealt with it we dead at the issue that's it 
Like, whatever y'all got to do with it ain't got nothing to do with me. We, She and I, we're good. Chris, I'm sorry, Garcelle joins and says she feels what Crystal alluded to, what was said, is something that would change the dynamics. Possibly. And then she, Garcelle says, watch your back with your new friend. Sutton says, let's move forward and work together. Again, her whole thing is, because this is an issue between she and I, we have already dealt with it. So that that's the beginning and the end. These ladies, primarily Kyle and Garcelle, are continuing to push this issue and they are going to make this a bigger thing. Not really the biggest fan of that, especially when a lot of this could have been cleared up at the reunion. But, but uh, we just going to keep on moving forward. Kyle says she's confused with uh, Sutton because last year she cried over everything and now she has no emotion. What is going on? I don't like the fact that Kyle is sitting here constantly trying to sit here and, you know, push things on Sutton that don't necessarily need to be there. Like, I really hope Sutton give Kyle the blues at the reunion. I really do because I already don't like Kyle, but she is working my last damn nerve. Seriously. So, Cal brings up to Crystal uh, the um, the trip conversation. And Crystal says, you know, Cal, you don't remember. And Cal is upset. I'm sorry, at this point, um, I'm sorry. Cal and Garcelle talk about what is going on. Crystal joins. And this is when Crystal says to Cal, like, yeah, you were there, but you don't remember. And Cal gets very upset saying don't tell me i don't remember oh so you can tell somebody how to feel but somebody can't tell you what you doing what you don't remember the hypocrisy baby i don't like it so crystal says and this is where i was just like at this particular point crystal you have really opened this up to where wherever this goes because let's be clear garcelle started this had Garcelle just not brought up anything and just let Crystal say what she had to say and let that be the end of it, we wouldn't even be here. So I'm sorry. Garcelle, this is all on you. But Crystal, the fact that you said what she said, because she was talking to Kyle, like, she was like, what she said more than likely will never affect you, but it affects myself and Garcelle. And now at this point, Garcelle is concerned because, okay, I'm friends with this person. So she must have said something dealing with, you know, race, ethnicity, and all this other stuff. That might make me look at her crazy. And Garcelle is saying that right now, by her saying that, she has no choice but to think the worst. Crystal says, if we continue this combo, don't police my verbiage. That's not exactly what she said, but in essence, that's pretty much what she said. Like, don't sit here and tell me that the word dark is too much. Like, let's not go from talking about the issue to focusing on a word. Cool. And she said what was said was problematic, but forgivable. And, you know, they're looking at her like, how is something problematic yet forgivable? We all know people that sometimes just talk, you know, just talk recklessly. Or, again, they don't always process what is coming out their mouth. We've all been guilty of it. And sometimes we have said problematic things. Some of us have said, you know, racially insensitive things, you know, um, discriminatory things and whatnot doesn't mean that we are racist or prejudiced or whatever. But sometimes our our mouth moves faster than our mind in a moment where it's unlike what you just said is problematic, but I do know you. I'm pretty sure that's not what you meant or you don't really feel that way. You just own one right now. We can work to move past this. And I think that's pretty much what she was saying. Like it was problematic. And again, we all realize that, you know, Sutton is quirky. And Sutton has even said that, you know, sometimes when certain topics come up, she gets uneasy and she just says, you know, things without, you know, says things without thinking. And I'm pretty sure that might have been one of those situations because I feel that we're probably not going to find out what it was next week. But the week after, because you know how Bravo do. And they asked, then why bring it up? And I like the fact that she said to Garcelle. Because the question you asked me was damaging, meaning I would have never said nothing had you just sat there and minded the business that pays you rather than trying to sit here and defend your friend at every point because you got called. Now, she didn't say this, but 
Sutton, not Sutton, Garcelle got called out mostly by the viewers and the reviewers that you didn't have your friends back as much as you should have. So now you're coming in, going overboard and having your friends back and you're doing the most right now. So Sutton joins as well as the other women and Sutton says, look, I've apologized. I've learned a lot. I've changed a lot. And she just wants to move forward. And again, listen to what she said. I've learned a lot and changed a lot, which leads me to believe, because uh, here, here's the thing. We don't know what was said, and maybe just maybe Crystal might have, you know, taken it to the chest a little bit too hard and may have maybe put a little extra stank on it. But again, you can't tell somebody how to feel. But the fact that Sutton is saying, I've learned a lot and I've changed a lot means that she more than likely did say more that we're just not tuned into. <clears throat> and like um, Crystal told to Kyle, you, it probably doesn't affect you because again, when something doesn't affect somebody else, they pay a lot of that stuff to us. All right. So Doree shares her insight and says, you know, defend yourself without, hold on, wait. She said, defend yourself without saying what you don't want to say. And again, here you go policing what it is that she is saying because some of y'all care more than the people that are actually involved. Especially when Sutton already told y'all we didn't dealt with it, let it go. But y'all don't want to let it go. Okay. So Crystal says she was asked a question, defended herself. Garcelle asked why use the word dark. And here is when Crystal got a little bit bugged with Garcelle. And honestly, I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna let it slide. I'm gonna let this one ride. I, I'm gonna let this one ride because she said, with based in her voice, we already talked about this Garcelle pretty much again, policing her verbiage, and pretty much, and like I wrote in my notes right here, Garcelle, you started this and you did, and that scene is over. We end the episode with Dore doing a therapy session, rehashing her experience from you know the um the event. There's a reprogram therapy that they're doing to try to sit here and, you know, um, change the thoughts associated with these memories. And that is pretty much it. So that's all I got, y'all. Uh, yeah, please break, comment, subscribe, and share. And I will see you all for the next video. As of right now, I haven't watched it yet. I'm more than likely probably just going to watch Dubai and not review it. And if I do, I might just do a video of talking points. But don't even hold me today. Because I already have enough videos to do. With that being said, I will see you all later. Peace.